reported that. a moment ago, Gallaudet University officials last night appointed a new president and a new chairman of the board of trustees, both of whom are deaf. That came after a week of student protest and campus shutdown in response to the original appointment of a president who could hear and did not know sign language. As word of the new appointment spread around the campus late yesterday, elated students gathered at the school's gymnasium to celebrate their victory. They were chanting and signing, we won, we won. At a news conference this afternoon, Dr. King Jordan, the university's first deaf president, expressed his joy at being chosen to lead Gallaudet. Jordan has been on the faculty for 15 years and was dean of the university's College of Arts and Sciences before this appointment. He joins us now in our Washington studio. Dr. Jordan, does this mean that all of the students' demands and concerns have now been completely resolved? The, the students established four demands, the first of which was the appointment of a deaf president. The second was the resignation of Mrs. Spillman as chair of the Board of Trustees. The third was that a majority of the trustees be deaf, 51% or more. And the fourth was that no reprisals be given to anyone who participated. All except the third are met now, and the third is being addressed by the establishment of a task force that will look into ways to modify the uh, composition of the board. What do you think will happen? Do you think the board will, in a short period of time, uh, become majority deaf? I would hesitate to speak to the time that would be required because I wouldn't want to see the board change overnight. That wouldn't be healthy or in the best interest of the institution. The task force that was established will be made up of a majority of deaf board members, and I'm sure that they will address the issue very carefully. You were one of the finalists uh, originally when Dr. Zinzer was selected, and after she was selected, you initially supported her appointment. Why was that? At, uh, at that time, I thought it was still a Gallaudet University issue, something on the campus, a student protest about the selection of a president. But one day after that, I realized that it had become something much more than that. It really had become a national and international civil rights movement for deaf people. What made you realize that? I supported Dr. Zinser on Wednesday morning. Between Wednesday morning and Thursday afternoon when I changed my mind, I must have had a hundred different conversations with people on the phone, on the TDD, in person, and virtually everyone I talked to told me that I had made a mistake. And in retrospect, I think I did make a mistake. The students, of course, seem to be leading this protest. Does this mean that the, that the younger generation is, is, is ahead of, uh, with all due respect, uh, your generation in, in, uh, in <laughs> being out front on this? I, uh, I think that if you look back a generation, there were not a lot of deaf people with PhDs or the academic credentials necessary to move up in academia. The, uh, the situation is changing very rapidly. Before, in fact, when I was a college student myself, I saw the first deaf PhD. And now there are hundreds of people with PhDs who are deaf. So it's a different situation now. Sum up for us what this means for Gallaudet, what, what has happened this week. I think in the long run we'll find that it's been very positive. We've we're living in a uh, fishbowl this week, and I hope it continues for a while, frankly, I really do. People outside Gaudet who know nothing about deafness, now their eyes are opening and they're learning so much about what's happening in our world. Also joining us is Dr. Frank Bowe. He is chairman of a federally appointed commission on the education of the deaf, which will formally make a report to Congress next week. Dr. Bowe is also a regional commissioner for the Rehabilitation Services Administration, which is a part of the U.S. Department of Education. Dr. Bowe, is there a, a broader significance to what happened this week than just what it means for Gallaudet University? Yes, very much so. Gallaudet, I think, has begun a process that I believe is going to continue. 
Most programs serving people who are deaf are not themselves run by people who are deaf. And I think you're going to begin now to see some pressure on the other institutions and programs. I think for the Congressional Commission that I chair, we would not want to see more unrest. We would prefer to see the other programs get a message, begin to understand that, as our commission does, that people who are deaf are ready now to begin to assume some responsibilities. Why is it so important that programs to help the deaf be run also by people who are deaf? Well, I think if you look at programs serving people who are women, for example, or blacks, that question would not be asked today. It's being asked only of people who are deaf at this moment. I think if you look at a program serving people who are deaf, you want to send a very clear message a message that these people can achieve, can win, and can lead. And that really can only be sent, that message, when the institution or the program is headed by someone who can articulate personally the values of that program. Do you see that the same way, Dr. Jordan? Oh, yes, absolutely. I really do. I, uh, I can't tell you the emotion and the feeling that exists at Gaudet University right now. I went to Gallaudet last night after a brief press conference when my appointment was announced and people were dancing in the streets. It was a wonderful, wonderful feeling. And they're dancing in the streets because they know now that the cap on what they can achieve has been lifted. We know that deaf people can do anything hearing people can except hear. Dr. Bo, back to you again. Give us some of the key, some of the most important recommendations that, that you will be making uh, to Congress uh, ne this next week. Um, I will be testifying to Congress on Monday, the 21st, to the Senate, and I will be representing the Commission's main recommendations, which total about 40. Uh, there are so many because there's so much that's left to do. We will be making recommendations on education of children to start earlier, do a better job. We will be making some recommendations by God out of self, which I hope that King Jordan will pay attention to. We will be making recommendations by captioning the television. We believe that it's a technology whose time has come to serve young children just learning to read. Older people who's hearing you're reading, people from other countries who come here to learn the English language. Captioning is, should be available to them also. We will have recommendations that I believe will look to the future of technology in the classroom, speech recognition on computers. Um, even speech itself can now be taught using some of the new technologies. Do you? I think in some, yes. I was just going to say, how good a job do you think we have done in this country up until now of working with those who are hearing impaired? We've not done well at all. The average deaf person graduating from high school today is still reading in approximately third grade. Um, so many of them are just not ready for today's economy, today's society. They are not being prepared. And those recommendations, I think, are strong recommendations that with today's economy, we've got to get these kids ready for a whole new world involving a service economy, involving new technologies. I hope that God is at the beginning because there's a large mountain that's left to climb. Dr. Jordan, there are some who might look at what happened at Gallaudet this week and wonder if, if it may lead to a more, uh, a, a closing perhaps of the deaf community, a more, a more of a feeling of self-sufficiency rather than an integration of deaf people into the rest of society. Is it one or the other? No, I don't see it that way at all. In fact, I would really disagree. I've been at Gaudet for 15 years, and in that 15 years, I've met both hearing and deaf people. And I don't see 
just hearing versus deaf. There's a cooperation. There's a real, the hearing people who work at Gallaudet care, are sensitive. They're working there because they want to work there. And I don't see us narrowing our focus at all, no. Dr. Bo, what a, the same question for you. Oh, I would agree. I think that for some of us who have been working in the quote, hearing world, unquote, for many years, it's been a bit lonely. And I would welcome many of you, a girl dad, if you'll come out and fight with me. Let me just finally ask both of you, what happens next? You have a, uh, what appears to be a great success at Gallaudet. What is the next goal uh, for you? Dr. Jordan? I, uh, I have quite an agenda, I'm sure you can guess, but a number of the things on my agenda now are university related and therefore have curriculum implications and so forth. And really, having been president for only 24 hours, I think I would rather wait until I have the opportunity to discuss with the faculty and the staff what my agenda is. We'll give you that opportunity. <laughs> and I want to ask Dr. Bo the same question. What is next uh, in the short run for the deaf community? I think the next is to try to explain to Congress where God that leads, what the next steps are. As happy as we all are, and I'm delighted, there's so much work to be done that I think in the short term we have a lot of explaining to do. Where has society failed? Where do we have to go? What are our needs? And if we communicate them clearly, I think we're well on our way. Well, we thank both of you, Dr. Frank Bowe in New York, Dr. King Jordan here in Washington. Thank you.